This is Pep Shooter. You now tune in to Philly Fame TV. No Philly stand up. Pep Shooter, man. What's going on, man? What's up, bro? Yeah, some people may be familiar, some may not be familiar. So we going to, you know, give them a little bit of your story, your background and stuff like that so people can get familiar. Because you got a, a pretty interesting story, Now, I mean, as far as, like, how you came to be on my radar and stuff like that. Right. Like, I appreciate that, too. Know what I mean, for sure. So I first heard it. I mean, I give them the story from, from like this. Now, I mean, we're going to do this a little different than my other joints, like... So I first heard you, you know what I mean, like t 2010, I think it was, mm -hmm. when you did the drink with me, you know what I mean? Yeah, I be deadly on the block with it, clock with it, on a car tire in case the cops get it, on a car tire. My nigga shoot at the top with it, at 47, stock kid it, and a lot with it. You know what I mean? And at the time, me was lit. So when I see him in the joint with you, I'm like, damn, who, I mean, like, I know Meek, you know what I mean? At the time, he on fire. Yeah, I'm like, who the fuck is Pep Shooter, you know what I mean? Right. So then I start following up, you know what I mean? Following, looking, doing more research to find out who you are. Fast forward, we start doing the, you know, the Philly Fame TV situation. We end up doing an interview with NH, you know what I mean? I think that was like his first interview exclusive in that, in that man. Shout that, out NH. Yeah, and he shared his story. From, you know what I mean, back in the day when he first started rapping, he said, like, he told me in that interview, like, him and Meek was a group before back in the day, mm -hmm. which I didn't know. And he said, you also had another person in the group, Pep Shooter. Right. Yeah, started this Lights Out Click shit. Me, Pep Shooter, and him. And we just was, we was running with that shit for a little minute. And so that put two or two together, like, damn, so Meek know him from back then. So fast forward, here we are 2020. So I was like, nah, man, I think it'd be good to give people this story who may not be familiar. So let's start off from the very beginning uh, uh, of that group, you know, Lights Out Click, Lights Out Entertainment. Right. Now, I mean, with you, Meek, and H, and it was uh, several other people who was a part of the situation as well. Sure. So, so go ahead. Out, yeah, so go ahead and give people that story. Lights Out, man. If you know me, you know about Lights Out, man. We did everything. We was young, bro. We was, uh, at the time I was 14. Um, that shit was lit, bro. We started in 2000. And we just, we just was young boys rapping, man. We wasn't no older. The oldest of us was Zai and I think Jay Worthy. Z-A and Jay, Jay Worthy, rest in peace, Z-A. They was two years older than us, two or three years older than us. But at the time, I was 14, so they had to be like 16, 17, you feel me? They was the oldest, but we was young niggas that had bars, so we all knew how to rap, like real good. We was young, to the point where it's all like, we was rapping so good. Old people ain't take it serious, cause like, man, Y'all, it sound good, but we know y'all ain't doing that shit, but we just made it sound good. And I had a vision as a young businessman. I just wanted to, uh, I just knew we could be bigger than what we was. I started a label. And I just, uh, I got the blueprint from uh, Jay-Z, Dame Dash, and uh, Biggs, on that Rockefeller shit. And uh, also Rough Riders with DNY, which is black entrepreneurs starting a record label. I knew we was young, but I knew we could do it. You just had to have somebody with a, a mindset to do it. So what had happened was I um I was going to St. Martin de Porres. I got kicked out of Catholic school. I always lived on Crossy Street, um, Crossy and Burks, but I never uh I've never really hung with motherfuckers around there. We was cool, but I never hung with them. But uh, it didn't start till I went to Strawberry Mansion. I got kicked out of uh, Catholic school, went to Strawberry Mansion. I was just hanging more with the people in my neighborhood, and they all knew I rap. They all knew I was good at rapping. And they rap, they used to always try to battle me. And I used to be like, no, 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 like I'm too good for them. Like on some real shit, I used to always act like that. But then one time, this is me and my man Ty, shout out my man freaking Ty. He was walking to school early in the morning, and he just was like, yo, bro, I wanna uh, rap with you. I wanna start a group with you. And I was telling him, like, bro, while I start a group, we can start a movement, we can start a whole label. 
And we thought it took us like two weeks. We walked to school every morning. We would come up with names, all these different names for a, 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 a label that would be good. It's going to catch people's ears and everything. It's going to be exciting. And we finally came up with lights out. <clears throat> we came out with the logo. The logo was a light bulb with a crack in it. Lights out records, we said no. Lights out management, we said no. We said lights out entertainment. Boom. And uh, me, Freaky Ty. It was my man Paul, his Freaky Ty brother Jay Worthy, ZA, Cash, rest in peace, Samir, who's Fresh Costello. My man Mike from 20th Street. Charles, motherfuckers, I'm naming, they don't even rap anymore. Long story short, my cousin Rel, rest in peace Rel, he went to uh, Rhodes at the time. It was before Rhodes was all real school. And him and NH was uh, cool. I ain't gonna put NH's real name out there, but he introduced me as his real name. And we, uh, he was like, yo, my man, my best friend, now rap. You rap, I know you starting your little record label. Man, mind you, at the time we 14. So my little, my cousin, this my, he, he a little, Rest in peace, huh, man? But he was he was a year younger than me. But he like, I know you taking it serious and you gonna do this. He hot. Uh, long story short, me and Ralph link up. We go to the Johnson homes. We knock on this lady door. This lady comes to the door. This old lady. We ask, we ask for uh, NH. Say his real name. She look at us like, mine was like nine o'clock at night. She's like, no, he ain't here. I'm like, all right, he leave. So me, I'm on some shit. I'm like, man, that nigga there, he did some, some scary shit. He probably told her not to come. He like, no, bro, he ain't there. I already told him about you, boom, boom. So like the next day we go back, knock on the door, NH comes to the door. And me and NH rap for like an hour. He rap for me. I spit, he spit, I spit, I spit, I spit. I'm real competitive. So he just was going, and I'm going, he going, I'm going, boom. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm starting the label, boom, boom. This and that, boom, boom. I pull a contract out. I had a book bag, I pull a contract out. Nigga sign that shit. Real name, stage name, NH. I sign my name. I told him I gotta get my partner to sign his name, which was Ty. Take it back to Ty. Ty took my word for him. I'm like, yo, he hot when we signed it. And uh, that, I think it was that summer, or it's coming into the summer, my man Ty come to me like, yo, I got this. My man, he not rap. He hot. So I'm like, who? Like, you ain't gonna believe me. You, know, you see him every day. You be, you be together every day. So I'm like, who? He like, Rami. So I'm like, Rami can rap? He's like, yeah. He hot. I'm like, all right. It's time to rap for me. He's like, say no more. Later on that day, we at the pile, 23rd Street. We rap for me. Same thing with NH. We go, I'm rapping, he rapping, I'm rapping, he rapping. He ain't have a lot of respect back then. He just started. Rap. Nice, bro. You on the label? And he he was forward. Like he was looking, he was looking to uh, like find some like a home, I guess, so to speak. Sign me. I mean, that's how I found out his real name. I ain't even know. I mean, I ain't know. His real, I thought his real name was Rami back then. His real name, stage name. His, his name was just Meek Millions. And uh, meantime, and we just started working on tapes and shit. All these tapes on the karaoke machine. We went downtown. Shout out Jay Word, man. Jay Word was opening us. He had a job. He was doing construction. He graduated high school at the time. We still in high school. But this motherfucker took his paycheck and uh, bought us a boom box, two microphones, and all these motherfucking Maxell cassette tapes. And we just went to, we was in, we in Freaky Time, Jay Worthy basement, Meat basement, my man Charlie basement. Or my basement when we mainly was in my basement, me basement, and Ty, uh, Ty and basement. And our parents supported us, the neighborhood supported us. We used to just rap, record it. We used to dub that shit. We used to rap the first line, the first verse, one take. Nobody can't fuck up. So we used to just rap. Everybody go. Then we uh, put that recorded tape into the other play that, play that, and then put a uh, blank tape in the joint, record that, and then we do the ad -libs. We had tapes, we weren't even selling them joints. We just was letting up folks hear them. And we was just hot. I mean, we were just happy just to hear what we was hot. The motherfuckers started saying we was hot. That's when we started taking it serious. 
and I was on my business shit. I started reaching out to all the motherfucking old heads who was shaking and moving and powering with money. Uh, uh, how I owe his cigar. If you want to know cigar, oh, he owned the Crab Shack on Ridge Avenue. He had a studio, uh, I think it was called, um, I forgot, it was off Many Young Avenue. We went there, <clears throat> Ed Hurt, cut him to him, he old head, riding around the Tahoe's and shit, cut him to him, neighborhood. We looked at him as kingpins, drug dealers and shit. I mean, uh, Stud, Sim, fucking, uh, like whoever, whoever, whoever we seen that was older than us, the lot was getting some money. We was bringing our raps to them. None of what we was trying to do. But at that time, you gotta remember, <clears throat> that's like 2000. 2000, 2001. Them boys ain't want us to have a hustle for them. But we still was like, and man, we had a couple of them. That shout out at her, shout out Cigar. Pay for a studio time and like, link us up with motherfuckers and shit. Like, I just think we was ahead of our time, but we was, um, I just was trying to get his on at the time, like young. I was trying to get his on real, real young. You niggas, I don't think nobody was taking it serious. And I don't think nobody took nobody. If you was like under 18 and rapping at the time, you were not really gonna get took serious for what you was saying, how you was spitting it. But I'm gonna give a lot of credit and shout out to State Property and Major Figures. Cause they was young. And when Chris and you came out, they was like, the whole, like, he's 16, 16. Man, we like 14, 15. We like, oh, we can do it. He talking that shit, we can talk that shit. So we start going harder. And uh, as we got, as we start going harder, motherfuckers just start going in different routes. And then, uh, time went on, shit start flourishing. We had jerseys, jackets, headbands, all that shit. We was doing our thing with Lifestyle, but we just got older. Beat went that way, NH went that way. I'm doing me. I'm all in the streets, in and out of jail. And like, you know, that shit, that shit is what it is, but that shit was fun. I tell you that, that shit was fun. And I'm just, uh, I'm happy to get the flowers while I can smell them. That's all, bro. Motherfuckers don't want to know what I did. I know me, you know, you know what it is. What I did, what I started, who I influenced, man. That's all. All right, so yeah, basically, um, you basically touched on and ran down, you know, some of the situation as far as like how the lights out situation kind of came together and the little run y'all had and stuff like that. Like a lot of people more so remember NH from Touch Money, obviously. Right. They remember Meek from Headshot, obviously. But this was prior to all of this. Right. So I want to get into a, a little bit far as like, cause some stuff that I don't really know too much about, like far as like, once y'all had y'all, y'all little, your little run or whatever, like how long did it last before people separated and went their own little way and stuff like that? Two years. We started in 2000. 2002, everything was like everybody went their separate way. But it's funny you said that because you know it's crazy. Uh, like, I don't mean to like be on no cocky shit, but I gave them niggas that, that, uh, that leadership quality. You feel me? Like you said, it, me went on and started Bloodhounds. Each went on and started Touch Money. But you feel me? They got that shit for me. I guess they just wanted to grow. I guess they wanted to do the a own CEO or boss. I ain't gonna say the boss. I never was the boss of them, but that leadership quality, you feel what I'm saying? They ain't have it. At the time, we was young. They was looking for it. I just was ahead of my time. Like, I was on some other shit. But they, um, they started, he started that, he started that, and it was like, that shit popped. That shit was successful. And I was happy for him. I really, truly, genuinely was happy for him. Like, and I seen what they was doing. I knew what they tried to do. But it was like, uh, if we was, if we was, if, if we was talking at the time, and we all was caught at the time, we all would have been more successful. That's it. Actually, so like I said, from that point, everybody separated the day thing, obviously, and had they run on the DVD era and all of that. And then, like I mentioned in the beginning, how. Um, at some point in time, you end up doing a song with me after he was lit already. Right. I mean, y'all did a video and all of that. So speak on, I mean, if you can briefly like run down 
what that time was when everybody separated and did their thing and how y'all end up connecting to do that video back in like 2010 it was. All right. Um, Cause you said they went off in like 2002, right? right. 2003, something like that. So yeah. that was a nice little gap between, you know yeah, what I mean? So sure. yeah, give them that rundown. That's eight years. Um, what happened was 2002, broke up, everybody went their separate ways. Uh, niggas just got grown, I know. I grew up, I was in the streets. They was doing them. And it's time to fly. We seen each other rub, rub shoulders and shit, brush arms. Be like, what's up, bro? And that's it. But um, what happened was, I, uh, they was buzzing. I'm gonna keep on it. They was buzzing. Meek was buzzing with Headshot uh, DVD. And, and H was buzzing with the OG Did It DVD. And, uh, and H had Touch Money, and he was backed by Top Class with Reed and, uh, and uh, Rain Man and all of them. They was buzzing. And it's like, damn, here I am. And everybody's like, damn, Pat, they buzzing. What you doing? Boom, boom, boom. And I reach out to them when I run into them. Like, yo, bro, put me on. Let's do this, let's do that. Like, you know what I mean? They be like, all right, but they, there wasn't no progress. So I said, fuck it. And I just came to everybody. I got a hit. I, I got a uh, mixtape called uh, Respect the Shooter. And I was wanting my respect. I want everybody to know who I am, what I'm capable of, and my talent. Dropped a mixtape, like 17 tracks. I dissed the whole head shot. And I dissed the whole Touch Money Takedown OG Did It DVD John. And um, I rubbed rub with a lot of feathers. But I was heard. I wound up uh, being in the streets, got into some shit, got fucked up by the cops, came up on some case money, took that case money. Invested in myself, took care of my family. And you know, like when you get money, it's like a new insight on life. I'm gonna keep 100 with you. It was just different from anything I ever experienced. It was just like a lot of small shit was my new. So I just was like, fuck it. So around that time when I ran into them guys, uh, Miko NH, it was love, and it was genuine love. It was, bro, we was teenagers. I'm a grown ass 20 year old man. And, I mean, 22, 21 or some shit. Let's get some money. Let's do this, like. And um, it was what it. It was like they couldn't wait for me to get on that type of time with some real shit. Did track with H, did track with Meek, and that shit was just. It was lit from there. Like, we just been like grown ass men that just knew how to rap since we was kids, that's all. Alright, alright. So after the vid came out with me, like I said, I did a song in the vid, and like I said, I seen it came with some pressure. You know what I mean? Some people that's watching this me or me and I have seen it as well. So what was it like for you after that? You know what I mean? How was things for you after that situation popped up? After I did the joint, it's crazy because um I did the track like in January. Me and me did that track like in January, me was on house arrest. He did uh I forgot what other song, but he did 40 on my head. And I remember he kept fucking up on, he, uh, he painted the payment with his blood, blue, purple, burgundy, red. He kept fucking up on the blue, purple, burgundy, red part. He couldn't get no words together. And I'm like, yo, breathe, bro. Take a deep breath and say blue, purple, burgundy, red. He keeps saying it over and over. You're going to get it when you go on the John. He did it, boom. And uh, he was like, hop on this John. Like, he played his verse. He like, H going to hop on this John. And I want y'all, you would hop on it. You're going let everybody know, I mean, do it for the streets. And me and H, I forgot, me and H had some type of bullshit ass beef. We always got some bullshit beef, we ain't speaking to something. But I'm like, I kept spinning me, like, no, nah, I'll do it later or nothing. I was supposed to be on the floor in my head. My fault. But uh, we did, wind up doing Deal on the Block. After I did Deal on the Block, in January, I got locked up. I caught a gun case. I think I was locked up for like a month, bailed out, and when I when I came home, I got on fucking Facebook and shit. I had at least at the least a thousand new followers. It's all there. Just me buzzing, me buzzing in the video out, and um that shit was just buzzing. I ain't gonna lie, I was different. I got a lot of fucking dudes because I'm gonna keep running. Like, that shit was wild. Right. So like I said, that was like 2010. I mean, so fast forward some time after that. I mean, like, did y'all ever 
have any talks about doing something after that? Was that, you know what I mean? Like, did you ever bump into him after Because I know after that, shortly after that, sure. I want to say a couple years after that, I think I, that's when he signed with Ross and all that. For sure. So, between that time that y'all dropped the joint and the time that you got signed, was it? what was the situation? It was tight. The whole time. After we did, uh, after we did Yell on the Block, we was tight. We was in the studio several times. Like, me and me. We, been, we hung together way more times than we got. We should have at least a fucking mixtape out together. But, um, yeah, me, um, when me and me did Daily on the Block, he was actually in negotiation with Grand Hustle. He wanted him not signing with Grand Hustle, signed with Rick Ross. Again, I get locked up. I put a violation in the case. I think I sat for like six months. I come home. Uh, me signed with Rick Ross. We, uh, Pull up on on Burke Street. I'm like, yo, welcome home, blah, blah, blah. I got a show out Baltimore, we out. I want to talk to you about something. We go to, uh, we link up, go to Baltimore, give me a dream chase a shirt. We on a sprinter, we on a uh, sprinter. This morning, he working on dream chases too. We, um, he let me hear Burn, it's not finished. When him and Big Sean, let me hear that joint. Like, fuck with him, like, yeah. Let me hear a few other tracks and shit. And um, we just talking and shit. He just like, yo, bro, stay out of jail. Look at this rap shit, you got it, you know we got it. And I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you, show, bro. I never told nobody the story, but he like, like, well, all he, bro, real rap, he, he tell me he wanna start a label. Just before Dream Chases Records. He like, I'm gonna start a label. I'm gonna name me Dream Chases Entertainment. And first niggas I'm gonna sign, I'm gonna sign Blood Hams. I'm gonna sign you, I'm gonna sign an H, I'm gonna sign Vodka, I'm gonna sign G, and uh, what's the city you gonna sign? Um, it was a female, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't me made at the time. Mine was 2012 before even, this was before he went to jail and the, the label started popping. This was before Melly was rapping. But, um, yeah, he was like, and man, he basically told me, kept Keep going, keep going. Then we um <clears throat> every now and then we link up. It was a uh a white all white pool party. So here with Sam's we linking to each other, bust it up, talk about this and that, this and that. So I tell him like, yo, bro, I'm about to drop this mixtape. All I want you to do is do the intro, introducing me to the label. He like, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Just call me, and I do it over the phone. Call him, never get an answer. But I never took that to uh, heart. I get booked, he get booked, we write each other in jail. It was the whole, you know, keep, you know, keep rapping the label. When I come home, I got you. And it was like, all right, he came home, gave him time to get his feet wet, do his thing. You know, I know he busy. <clears throat> but then it was just like, oh shit. I just got tired of, so I vented out. I get on Instagram and I vent out, do the whole 15 minute video, had like 20 of them Jones. Expressing myself, talking my shit. Like, everything I said was true. I said no lie. I, I, I sent no threats. Just was talking my shit. And motherfuckers was respecting it. Because they knew they was on the, it wasn't on the outside looking in. They they knew me, they knew him. But they seen what was going on in the, um, in the real world between us. And motherfuckers was liking it, commenting, and this and that. But it wasn't, I wasn't doing it for no clout. I was expressing myself. And I was very high. I was very high, like on four fucking thirties, sir, like a weed. I was high and I was vent. But long story short, we say something to me on Instagram, I say something back, we type it. We, we beefing on Instagram, comment for comment. We drop a track. I feel like he's saying some shit that I ain't like. Cause I'm a rapper, he rap, and I know he's talking about me. I dropped my track. The hood go berserk. Like everybody. My man, shout out my man Dev. My man Dev, like, yo bro, like if you if you do this, you know it gotta be hot. And I'm like, I know. So when I did it, it was hot and it was 100 percent all facts. I never threatened him. I never talked about shooting nobody. It was just me talking about what he did wrong and what he said. Talked on FaceTime for like two minutes about the track, about our little situation, our little riff. And it was just a mutual understanding. I'm a mutual understanding. It was, we just agreed to disagree. 
it's no beef. I ain't talked to him since. But like it was just it was just like fuck it, like you know, grown man. Right, right. So fast forward, I mean the next couple years passed, like you said that was like twenty twelve, you said, right? From twenty twelve to twenty fifteen. Twenty twelve, twenty fifteen. So mm -hmm. we're in twenty twenty now. Right. So over the last several years or whatever, I see you with you know, touching the rap stuff here and there, like you, you do some stuff, you fall back, do some right. stuff, fall back. <laughs> then you just recently told me, like you recently just came home, so you still been on the in and out of the jail type time. I mean, so yeah, yeah. explain those last couple of years, what you've been going through and where you at with it currently. Like, cause we in the studio right now, no people hearing the music, mm -hmm. banging next door, your folks recording next door, so we came over. <clears throat> in this room so we can knock this out. So explain That's what's sure. been going on the last couple years and what you doing currently. I'm I'm always in the studio, bro. I'm always in the studio. I'm a business man. Like I love music. I know how to run a label I know how to shop motherfuckers. So that's about to be doing. But from then from then to now, um from 2015 to 2020, the last five years, man, I done had kids. I've been in and out of jail like what three times, but uh, I mainly just been focusing on like real life shit. You feel me? Like I just lost, I lost two cousins and shit. That was like my brother. Uh, another one of my cousins is like my brother. Like I got three fucking cousins being my brothers. The other one, he fucking facing uh, life in jail. So I just been focusing for the past five years. I've been focusing on life and not really, uh, not really focusing on rap too much. Like, and I ain't gonna lie, bro. I get a DM at least every other day. Somebody telling me when I'm asking me when I'm gonna drop or telling me don't stop this neck. But sometimes that rap shit get boring. And that shit it costs a lot of money. It be a waste of money. But I love it. So I just been. Uh, I be in and out, bro. I don't even know. I'm a little confused about that shit, man. I be in and out, man. Like me and H, shout out and H. That's my bro, man. I love that nigga to death. We had a long ass talk. I told him I ain't fucking that shit no more. It's long ass talk, like, bro. I feel that same way all the time. But I'm gonna tell you, this is what you need to do. Get it this way, get it that way, and this and that. And it, it, it been working, but it's still just like. I be feeling like I got a lot of unfinished business outside of it, and that be my problem. That be the reason why I be going to jail. You know what I'm saying? So I be trying to balance that out. But other than that, I got five new projects coming, bro. They done, they recorded. I just don't be feeling like being a, being a rapper. You know I mean, if that make any sense to but I don't be feeling like being a rapper sometimes. All right, all right. No, definitely, definitely, bro. So, yeah, to recap the whole situation, I mean, because like I said in the beginning, definitely was an interesting story to hear your perspective on it because a lot of people see, you know, meet one of the top rappers in the game, not just, I mean, he started shout off out, the top. Shout out me, bro. Shout I mean, out yeah, yeah. That's my bro. I mean, so to see her make it to that level, and I mean, and they became, I mean, one of the heavy legends in the city. Sure. And I mean, so a lot of people that know of, of them may not have heard of you, I mean, y'all all was together at one point in time. And you admitted yourself, at least off camera, you definitely told me like at some point in time you felt some type of way like they was yeah. buzzing and they went you felt like they weren't putting you on to yeah. the level you felt like they should. It, it, as but, a young boy. Yeah, yeah, you know but, me, yeah like, like young, oh, years I'm ago. Young, years like, I'm ago. 20, years, I'm yeah. 19, 20 years old. And I'm like, like bro, we had tracks, so it's like, there's some tracks I killed them, there's some tracks H killed us, there's some tracks me killed us and it's some tracks we all just killed it but it's like everybody know like all right we all from Burks Street H from 25th and Burks 25th 26th and Burks me hung on 23rd but really lived on 18th I'm from Cross and Burks which is between 23rd and 22nd so if you like if you like from 33rd and Diamond or 33rd and Hunting all the way to like I'm gonna say uh, 16th in Susquehanna to Francisville, you feel me? To Lehigh, to 16th in Lehigh, like around that vicinity, man. Like, I'm gonna say from, all right, like this, from Rhodes to Franklin, the high schools. Back then, you knew who the fuck we was, and you knew, 
who had bars. We used to walk around battling the motherfuckers and they couldn't fuck with us. Like, shout out Diamond World. We killed Diamond World, by the way. But shout out to them. And it was just like, I just was on some shit. Like, my ego, like, come on, man. Like, if I'm not better than them, y'all know I'm fucking with them. And it was just, I had a uh, chip on my shoulder. But that was when I was 20, man. I'm 30. I'd be 34 this year. So it was like, you get older and shit, as I got older and shit, you start having money, you start doing shit. It's like, you don't even give a fuck about that shit no more. That's not even, it's not, a, it's not a, as important as it once was. So, yeah, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of me. I'm getting signed and accomplishing his goals. That was his goal. And age, I'm proud of him. Like, an Asian legend. Like, you feel what I'm saying? But I'm also proud of me more than I'm proud of me more than I'm proud of them too. Cause I'm cool with being behind the scenes and being a nigga that that they gave them the boots. Like both of them, two of the hottest niggas in the city. Not the hottest. I ain't, I ain't disrespect nobody. Two of the hottest niggas from our city can actually say like that motherfucker. That motherfucker is the one that started me. Like he the one that told me like. You can do this shit, like, you feel what I'm saying? So I'm cool with that, bro. I could be behind the scenes. I never really wanted the fame, always wanted the cash. That always been my goal. All right, all right, all right. And yeah, I mean, that was like, a, a I mean, one of the legendary groups that a lot of people probably ain't really too familiar with. Cause like right. I said, a lot of people know each more so for Touch Money, and right. know Meek more so for his shots. So a lot of people didn't even know that them two niggas right. was, was rocking together at but some point in time. Cause that was, that was before, the DVD era. Right, right. And that's why I always say, like, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I don't pat myself on the back. I don't toot my own horn. I'm gonna keep it 100. Credit, when credit do, credit do. Like, if, and I know people don't believe in ifs and stereotypes and hypotheticals, but if we was out, like, around the DVD era, just that, like, if we was, like, moved, like, four, two, four years further, we would have been on, we would have been signed. We probably would have been a legendary group that broke up. My friends want to see us get back together. Like on some Wu-Tang type shit, like seriously. Like, and we was, um, we was mimicking, like, I ain't gonna lie, we was mimicking. We was mimicking major figures, we was mimicking state property, we was mimicking uh, fucking uh, Diamond District. Diamond District was hot. Definitely. If you feel me, like legendary little groups from Philly, we was mimicking them and we wanted to be like them, but we was young. But we had so much ambition and so much talent. And I just wanted to be the one to say, yo, you can make it, bro, because we wasn't that good at basketball. <laughs> you feel me? Like, nigga, we can rap, bro. That shit, that shit gonna make you, it's gonna make you somebody, and it did. It made me somebody, it made eight somebody, it made me somebody. Like every that's one thing we got in common. You can motherfuckers recognize us from rap. Alright, right. All right, man, like I said, we in the stool. I mean, you was about to record something, I mean, you took a little break to do the interview. Right. I mean, but your folks recording next door, that's what the people been hearing throughout the course of the interview. So go ahead and plug what they can look forward to from Pep Shooter 2020, you know what I mean? With the summertime, pandemic shit going on, I mean, a yeah. lot of shit going on right now. So what, what, what's, what's up with Pep Shooter moving Bro, forward, man. like, man? I ain't even gonna hold up, keep it 100. I don't know. This pandemic shit fucked me up. I just came home in April. I got five projects in the cut. I got five group projects. Shout out my man Geech Geech, my nigga. I got group G and P we coming out. Um, I don't know, bro. I probably got at least like 20 more. I know it seemed like a lot, but it's not like 20 more projects. Like I'm talking about, I probably do like two more collabs. I don't know, probably like five. I don't know, bro. I'm just working. I'm just recording. That shit happen and happen and don't and don't, but I'm just happy to be alive. Shout out me, shout out H, man. Shout out my nigga Vodka, shout out Free AR Ad. Like, um, that's it, bro. Shout out y'all, Flyboy, Show TV, y'all, show me love. Y'all never hated, y'all never was on them nut shit, sucker shit. Before all this extra shit, like this viral shit, we was on Facebook, we used to chat, type it up. Yo, bro, I like your shit. I like your shit. We post each other shit. Now it's just different. You feel me? 
I don't think I can really fit into that uh, the criteria of, of, of people. Cause I don't like the. I know you got a network, but there's certain shit, and certain ways you gotta go that I ain't with. So, other than me dropping these projects that I already got recorded, I'm gonna be behind the scenes. I'm gonna be putting people on, be connecting people, and I'm most definitely gonna be writing. If you need a ghostwriter, please come see me. I won't charge you for the first four songs. Real rap, preferably a female. I got like, I got like 50 songs for a female. But I'm just ghostwriting the behind the scenes. That's it, bro. I'm just gonna be, I'd rather be the entrepreneur boss name in the back, man. I don't have to be the famous person. I'm gotcha. the rich person. Gotcha, gotcha. Sure. On that note, go ahead and plug your socials. How people get at you, follow you, stay updated, you know what I mean? Instagram at p.e.p.shooter. Facebook, Pep Shooter. Email. KyleKCash at gmail.com um, Just type in Pep Shoot. I'm on that pick. I'm on Spinrilla. I'm on YouTube. <clears throat> Soon to be on Title on Apple. I'm on uh, SoundCloud. I'm on SoundCloud. Um, just type in Google Pep Shooter, man. Go through my catalog. I got a lot of projects. I know you probably ain't never heard of me, but I'm somebody special, man. Somebody you need to meet. For sure. Um, um. Alright man, on that note man, we signing out till next time. Pep shooter, fully fame TV. We out of here.